um, Arne Gunderson is, uh, uh, has long worked in the nuclear industry and has very much become a whistleblower around the nuclear industry, former nuclear industry senior vice president who's coordinated projects at 70 nuclear power plants around the country, providing independent testimony on nuclear and radiation issues to the NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, congressional and state legislatures and government agencies and officials in the U.S. and abroad. He's now chief engineer at Fairwinds Associates and co-author of the Greenpeace Report, Lessons from Fukushima. Arnie, it's good to have you back again. We were speaking to you yesterday. Talk about the state of the nuclear power plants along the East Coast as you understand them today. Well, yeah, thanks for having me back. It's always a bad sign when you're back for a second time in, the, in a case like this. The, um, uh, the worst plant is the plant that we singled out yesterday on Democracy Now!, uh, which is Oyster Creek. Um, Oyster Creek was very close to where the, uh, the eye of the um, hurricane crossed into New Jersey. And um, uh, initially it lost all of its emergency sirens, which isn't uh, unexpected in the event of all this wind. But then afterward it actually had to declare an emergency because the tidal surge was, um, was very high. It was, they were within six inches of flooding the pumps that cool the nuclear reactor. Uh, those are called service water pumps, and they're right out <clears throat> on Barnegat Bay. So they, um, they had to declare an emergency, and they had no sirens to, uh, to announce an emergency if the situation had gotten worse. Um, several other plants have, have shut down Indian Point, uh, Nine Mile Point, um, another one down in New Jersey, Salem. Um, and, of course, reports are still coming in. Um, the ones that shut down uh, did go to their diesels to cool. Um, of course, the problem is that uh, Salem and uh, the Oyster Creek plant, which we just talked about, um, were in a refueling mode. And what that means is that all of the nuclear fuel is not in the nuclear reactor. It's in the spent fuel pool. And when you uh, lose off-site power, you can't cool the fuel pool. So I suspect in the next couple of days we're going to see reports of um, you know, the fuel pool is heating up um, as, um, uh, because they were unable to cool the spent fuel pool. What are you most concerned about now? I mean, the hurricane has been downgraded to what a post-tropical storm. But what about these nuclear plants and how, um, for example, Indian Point had to close, I understand, uh, because uh, around 1045 last night, because of external electrical grid issues, according to Entergy Corporation, which operates the plant? Um, I think we'll continue to see um, power outages, <clears throat> not local power outages where a, a city goes down, but where the, where the grid uh, goes down. When that happens, the power plant has to shut down. So uh, for the next day or so, we'll see um, grid disruptions that will cause nuclear plants to shut down. That's what happened at Indian Point. And when the grid shuts down, that's called loss of, the, um, <clears throat> of off-site power, um, and the diesels turn on and uh, provide the uh, power to the plant to keep it cool while the grid is on. So hopefully um, the, uh, uh, when these plants lose their, their power over the next couple of days, we'll uh, see the diesels turn on. And, and it likely, but not for sure, the diesels will turn on. The, the biggest other concern, though, is, is flooding. Um, the, just like at Oyster Creek, all of these plants have to be cooled by a river, or, uh, or a lake, and uh, if the water gets too high in that river or a lake, the pumps that cool the plant will be flooded, and um, that's called the loss of the ultimate heat sink, and the key word there is ultimate. Um, the, um, as happened at Oyster Creek, and um, uh, I think we'll likely see uh, you know, severe flooding in Pennsylvania and inland uh, areas for the next couple days. So we have to watch uh, flooding so that the intake structures of these plants um, uh, are, are still able to cool uh, the nuclear reactor and the diesels uh, that, that cool the plant. Those are the two big concerns, high wind and flooding. And nuclear power plants getting older and older, Arne Gunderson? Yeah. You know, the, this is, um, 
we call this a design basis event, um, the uh, the plant, no one ever thought that Oyster Creek would see uh, seven feet of flooding um, to the point where their service water pumps were in jeopardy. So, you know, this issue of global warming uh, is important because we've got conditions now where what we thought was the worst Mother Nature can throw at us, in fact, she had. Um, you know, the Oyster Creek event was like a one-in-a-thousand-year kind of a flood, and it happened. So if these design bases events are occurring, um, we need to reevaluate these older plants and say, oh, my God, we could have a more significant design basis event than we ever imagined, and we need to reevaluate hmm. whether these plants could withstand it. Well, Arnie Gunderson, a nuclear expert, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Uh, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. Arnie was speaking to us from 